everybody welcome to my channel um i'm allison and this is my youtube my cousin told me i should start a youtube channel and honestly i've been thinking about it for a while so today i decided i'll just videotape my day and see what happens um but honestly i gotta say the reason that i haven't started a youtube channel is because like i told my cousin yesterday I'm too ugly for this. <laughs> um, like, honestly, that's what's been holding me back is that I have, right now, like, really bad skin and I'm missing this tooth and there's, like, I need a haircut and blah, blah, blah. I just don't feel, like, very good about myself, so I haven't started it. But, you know what? I decided also that, like, this is just how I look, so. <laughs> but I also, I mean, I have a fake tooth that I can wear. But it's, like, uncomfortable because it's a denture, and sometimes I just don't wear it. But this is, like, how I look, so fuck it. But, um, yeah, I thought I would show you guys about my day. So, again, I'm Allison, and I live in Amsterdam. Right now, I'm from America. I'm from a small farm town in Oregon. And, um... I came here on a cultural exchange program, and I live with some host parents, and we live on a houseboat. It's really awesome. So, um, my room, I'm actually about to end my exchange year right now. This is, like, coming up on the one-year mark, so I'm packing my whole room up. It's crazy right now. I don't know if you can see, but there's, oh, there's my chochinos, my underwear hanging up, and just, like, everything is out. I've got my suitcase here. And honestly, just a mess. This room originally was not uh, a bedroom. This is the wheelhouse. So it was not really set up to be a bedroom first. And we had to make this closet uh, and sort of make it homey, this mirror, and put up some these curtains and things like that, you know. So today I'm just cleaning my room and trying to pack up and I have the whole day off. It's a weekday. It's really hot here and nobody has air conditioners in Europe. So it's a little sweaty, um, but we live on the water. So if I get too hot, I'm going to jump in until then I'm going to be busy packing my stuff and seeing what's up. I got these two suitcases yesterday at the thrift store which they call here a Kringlopwinkel and oh my gosh so this huge one you see here was like 17 euros this nice heavy duty one here you can see nice and thick that's this you can expand it see heavy duty handle for easy pickup and this one was like 12 euros so I got both of them and this hat Oh my gosh, I really look like a crackhead with my tooth out. <laughs> oh well, okay. How'd you do? Ooh, okay, I'm ready to go to the picnic or the Kentucky Derby or like a Sunday lunch or maybe like a little boat ride on the lake or something. So that's what I found at the thrift store yesterday. It was two euros and 50 cents. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna wear it while I clean my room. Okay, I thought it would be funny to show you guys this. Um, when you buy tobacco in Europe, they always come with these really disgusting photos on them of like what could happen to you if you smoke. So if you buy any tobacco pouches or any like packs of cigarettes, you will get any number of like lovely, exciting um, medical photos with like blood and tumors. And this one is my personal favorite. I mean, who put a binky in this kid's mouth? A cigarette binky. Okay. Oh, this one is the mildest one. 
But it's funny because, like, sometimes when you go pick out, like, all of the tobacco is behind the counter, and you tell them, like, oh, I want some tobacco, whatever, and they're like, oh, which one? And usually people go, like, buy, well, they, they'll just say, like, the brand first, um, JSP, and then they'll say, like, oh, the pack that's 5 euros and 30 cents. Um, but I like to keep it interesting and go, oh, I'll have the coughing blood, or I'll have the leg tumor. <laughs> Give me the dentist. Give me the um, decaying teeth one. I just think it's much better to order that way than to use the numbers. I mean, that's so boring. But actually, I don't um, really have that problem anymore because I don't buy tobacco anymore. Because it's bad for your teeth. <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> actually, packing bags kind of a ceremonial process and something that I do a lot because I travel and when I get somewhere and I'm gonna be there for like six months or more I start to like gather little trinkets and little things like I have all of these tiles and little rocks and stuff set up this is like way way less than I used to have I've been cleaning my room for weeks now but like just all these little trinkets here and little tiles like look at this one I found this one um actually here they use a lot of tiles like they recycle tiles and they use them in gravel so they like crush them all up and they put them put them down as gravel so I always pick them up from the sidewalks but I just like this one because it has little Dutch writing on it dot doot Yak weet het niet. Wat is? It doesn't show. It only has a couple words. But just like little trinkets like this that I pick up. Shells and cool rocks and stuff. And start to like kind of make it homey for me. Um, Because I think like my room is a sanctuary, you know. So I just want to like make it nice and cozy and like create an ambiance. But then when I get ready to move, it's a whole emotional process so I kind of want to like go through each trinket and be like okay should I keep this or not and do I have enough weight or room for it luckily with this trip like I'm going on the train and not the plane so when I leave Amsterdam I'm, I'm gonna go to Liverpool UK and it will be about 10 hours on the train so first I take a train um, I'm basically gonna go under um, gonna go underwater with the train so I'm gonna go like south from um, like let's say if Amsterdam is here then we're gonna go like this way to the coastline and go all the way south down the Netherlands and south through Belgium and I think at Belgium then I cross over the English Channel and then like here would be the UK that which is an island right um so that ch the water that I would cross over is called the Isle of Man and that's the English Channel and I'm going to be doing that on a train. So basically the perks of um, moving and transporting by train instead of plane is that I don't have a weight limit for my baggage. I don't have, I think they actually technically said on the website you can bring two suitcases but there's really nobody like monitoring that, you know, as long as I can get onto the train just fine. They have overhead bins where you can stuff your storage. So that's the nice thing is that I don't have to worry about weight, really. Um, and as long as I can, like, tie it to me or tie it to my other suitcase, like, I can have as many bags as I need, which is kind of dangerous because then, again, I want to keep all this stuff. So I usually, like, collect books and rocks and tokens and scrapbook stuff. I mean... I have like all of these little stamps and stickers and paper. I try not to get too much of that kind of stuff because I know I'll have to leave. The uh, hard part about traveling is that like there are a couple collections that I have that when I see something I want to keep it. So like eventually when I have a home have like either for decoration or whatever and like I have like a small collection of coffee cups and teacups in storage back in Oregon and so like when I find cups like this I want them and I want to keep them and ship them home you know and also this one I love this one so much it's like a paint color you know and it's got the number there 
And I think this is so genius because, like, imagine if you bought this um, for your kitchen or living room or whatever, then as if you bought the cup and you have this color, then, like, you never forget the color. Then you don't have to keep the little paper in your junk drawer. Unless you break this, then I would keep the pieces or something. But, like, these two, you know, I want to keep these and... That's just from this year in Amsterdam. Like, maybe the next place I go, I go I'll have another one. Um, I mean, things like this add up because coffee cups are not the only thing. So I try not to collect anything that's going to be too heavy. Oh, but books. Books always get me. Papers and ticket stubs and stuff are always nice, but then I never end up actually scrapbooking these things. I don't know. It's just a whole pain in the ass, you know what I mean? It's a whole process. I have not figured out yet what to do with this. This book, uh, I got it for a gift for Christmas and it has a really cool lettering in it and I've used it a ton. Um, but honestly, it's really heavy. Look at this one I made. If you have to give up, only give up for today. I love this font right here and I love these um, flowers. I made a whole um stationary set of three with those flowers which was supposed to go up in my art shop which hasn't opened yet maybe i could show that to you guys doesn't matter um what i was getting to is that i don't know like each of these items i want to keep so much you know but this is like so big and heavy it's just one item but i'm telling you i have so many of these items and i can only take so much with me <sighs> But, you know, these are the battles we choose. So, here I go. One thing that can be really helpful is that I try, I have this one briefcase, and I try to, well, I'm trying to be very um, planned and calculated about the way I pack. Because, here's the thing. I'm not just going straight from Amsterdam to Liverpool. I'm going to be staying with a friend for a couple weeks first. Um, and then I'll be going on the train. So I'll need like to pack all of my stuff from this room. But keep out like certain things that I'm going to need in the next two weeks. And then sort of pack away stuff that I'm going to need after that. And so it's like a very strategic type of packing. Because not only are you wanting to fit everything and have it organized. But you want to plan based on what your schedule is for the next few weeks. For the next little while. And this is like an added. This is one of the pain points of like traveling so often and traveling internationally and honestly since I'm trying to do more of this travel and my goal is to like be able to pick up more often it's good practice but what I'm trying to do is basically since I have a bunch of like important stuff with me all the time like paperwork projects I'm working on but then you also have like your birth certificate your nationalization records like you know anything that you needed to get into the country or that you need to have on you at all times while you're in the country stuff like that um i just have in this one briefcase and then it's pretty big and then also like if i want to try and fit these mailings in there too like i always have i always have like a backlog of souvenirs that i've purchased for people that just have not been sent out yet and some of these go back for months okay um, so I usually put those as well in my, um, briefcase. And also, like, one other thing about traveling internationally that you may, might not think about is that, like, your plugs are different in every country. So I usually have, like, different types of chargers in here as well, just, like, any sort of backups. I might not use some of these cords for months, but if I bring this briefcase with me and... You know, I always have it on me and it's sort of my electronic slash business and paperwork bag. Then if I go to England, I have a converter. If I go to the Netherlands, I have a converter. If I go back to the States for a visit, you know, all of my plugs from before I started traveling internationally are um, for American um, plug-ins. So I haven't used those that much in the last year or two, but if I go visit back to the States, then I have them. Um, 
but you probably want to like cut down as much of this extra shit that you have as possible. But yeah, you have to have it on you at all times. So I don't know. This is just. to brag a little bit check this out oh maybe you can't read it because it's in Dutch because this is from my Dutch class when I graduated and it's actually it's not that impressive because it says Allison completed the course <laughs> this is I got this before I even got my final test results to see if I really passed or not by the way I did but this just says you like hey yeah you took Dutch class so now I can actually speak Dutch. Certified by this certificate. It's official. Yeah, actually, of course, that's not how it works. But to be honest, I can speak a lot of Dutch. So, kan wel spreken. Maar this is a... Um, this is a hele slechte ding van de mensen van Nederlands dat allemaal, als je bent aan het spreken, dat zegt ze, oh yeah, you have an accent or something, like, oh, are you gonna try and learn how to speak proper Dutch, like, you know, after you get the hang of it and it's stuff, it's like, that's super off-putting to me. But it's okay, like, that's kind of what you come to expect when you're gonna learn a new language, that there's gonna be some times where you're gonna be made fun of for your accent or... You know, somebody's gonna be like, oh, you didn't say it right, um, and kind of make you feel like awkward or stupid, or they might laugh at you if you say something that's like funny or you say it in a funny way. So it's okay when people tell me like, oh, like I can tell you have a really strong accent when you speak Dutch. Honestly, when I speak Spanish, I always got the opposite, that I have really good pronunciation and this and that. So it was a bit weird to get these comments in Dutch but the Dutch, like the native accent, is really quite hard to imitate because, I don't know, Dutch language is very like, they have very pronounced vowels and stuff, like lantarnpal and like fade uh, and stuff like that. So they have that, but they also have the g, gerecht. Um, but sometimes like they're more relaxed with the g and it's all like a very, very fine like native ear can probably hear it and speak it correctly where sometimes they're more relaxed but I always go for the more like hard pronunciation because I think like I want to be understood and I don't know I'm not gonna go around lazily speaking a language that I like don't know like that you know so anyway when people tell me like oh I have a really strong accent I just say like Oh, and I had a friend, actually, like a close friend, so I wasn't offended when he said this, but he said, like, oh, are you gonna, like I said, are you gonna work on your accent and, like, try to speak like a Dutch person, like a native? And I just have mixed feelings about that. I just said to him, like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, I just want to be understood. Like, I know I have an accent, and, of course, I'm, you know, doing my best to pronun pronounce everything correctly, but if I have an accent, it's because... Dutch is not my first language, you know? And there's like not enough representation of successful second language students who like might have an accent or might say things grammatically incorrect, but I can run all my errands in Dutch and I don't have a problem like comprehending. So I think the most important thing is just like if you are understood and if you understand the other person. Past that, of course, you can work on your accent or whatever, but really, what's your goal with language? To communicate something. So if you're able to do that, like, who cares how you had to get there? You know what I mean? Anyway, guys, this is very unfortunate, but I think it's time to part with this jacket. I like it so much, but I've actually maybe worn it out once. It was a little tight for me, like I can't really move my arms that much, but look how fabulous it is. I mean, come on, come on.
that's such a statement. Maybe I'll hang on to it. Ooh, speaking of jackets and fashion statements, check this one out. Oh no, it's got some stains. Uh, I wonder if this is from the spiders. Spiders, that's a whole nother YouTube video. I'll tell you guys about that later. Living on a houseboat, I'm telling you about the spiders. Ooh, come on, fashion piece. With this and this hat, I mean, I could really go back in time. My grandpa made this. My late grandpa. Or, I don't know if he's dead. Actually, my grandma was married with him a long time ago. And, like, it was her first husband long before I ever came along. And he made, like, a bunch of clothes for her. Okay, this is, like, Little House on the Prairie. But it's a statement piece. It could definitely go with like something, you would wanna like make it sexier or risque down here to make it not so colonial up here because of the high neck and stuff. But it could definitely be done. The sleeves are just so unique. And I love that it's handmade, you know, by my grandpa. I've yet to really, oh, I did wear it once when I went to a museum. Obviously not getting rid of this one, but I had to show it. Okay, I gotta stop for a bit. I'm getting super hungry and I'm gonna stop still. Stand still, a stopping point. Snacky time. quite warm in here. Uh, I think it's time to get in the water. The neighbor boys are jumping in right now. Uh, you can hear them splashing around. So I think I need to follow suit. It's time. Always wear sunscreen, especially if you already have dark spots. I'm using SPF 50 because my dermatologist said if you don't, I'll kill you. Oh, that was a little too much. Okay, here we are like three hours later. I was busy. My mom called, my best friend called. I was FaceTiming for forever, literally just inside sweating because here in Europe, they don't have no air conditioners. And the boat gets really hot and just like humid and moist. So I'm sweaty. I'm finally out here. I'm I'm ready to jump in. Haha. -ha. Okay, so I was trying to do a backflip, um, but I kind of had my eyeballs open when I hit the water. 
but every time I get scared before I do a backflip. I did it the other day and it took me like a, a little while to like build up the courage. And still, even though I've done it a few times, like I still get scared every time. But I'm gonna try and make it like a nicer one. Okay, I decided not to do it because I'm too scared. And I don't want to. But now I'm just gonna go for a nice swim. water is really nice and all of my neighbors are like also out swimming I saw somebody doing a backflip off of their boat looked a lot better than mine <laughs> but I'm a little tired and I think now I'll just lay here and read for a while so I went swimming I laid down for a little while I really wanted to take a nap but my mind was not having it it was not shutting off um but it is afternoon it's um actually you know what time it is it's bottle tide or how they say bottle tide it's time for the appetizers that you have before dinner it's like 4 p.m. There's really nothing to eat anyway, so I have to go to the store. But you know that time when it's like 4 p.m. and you're like hungry and you want a snack, but dinner is gonna be like happening soon, so you're like, I don't want anything too big. That's bordel, bordel diet. B O R R E L. Bordel. Still, still can't say it right. Um, so I'm gonna go to the store and get some things for bottle tides and some things for Avondata for dinner as well because there's nothing there's no there's nothing here and we'll see what I do after that maybe I'll do a podcast episode later but I'm gonna take you guys to the store with me so we'll go soon I'm gonna go on my skateboard One thing you always gotta remember when you're shopping is your cloth bag because we don't like plastic. Plastic ruins the environment. Cooks and Lou! Yeah. Can I video you? Yeah. I'm going to the store. Any requests? Um, tapas. Okay. So some hummus, some, some uh, a baguette, mm -hmm. anything for dinner? Mm. Or anything we need? The usual. Okay. I go, I go.
that motor scooter. People are looking at me. Lekkere hapjes. Dit is alles. En deze is voor uh, borreltijd. Ja. Ik ben already starving right now, so I'm gonna get myself a little treat. I got um my bag out here. Groceries in my backpack. Ham cost croissant right here. Gotta get back before this salmon uh goes bad. boat and I'm like coming over the bridge and I see this boat I'll show you this one here sailing I wonder if that's my neighbor our boat doesn't move but some of our neighbors their boats still like sail and stuff so sometimes they like take their boat out I don't know where they go maybe for the day or maybe for a couple days and then they come back yeah, the, I know for sure one time they just took it out for the day. <laughs>
All right, well, I made it back, and then I did some relaxing, some laying down, some reading, um, but I actually realized that I forgot the lemons for the salmon, and we don't have butter, and I also, also wanna get some nail polish, so I'm gonna go back to the store, and then come back to the boat and hang out some more. But I'm gonna sign off for today. I hope you guys enjoyed coming with me uh, swimming and to the store. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and um, shoot me a comment if you want to see more of something. Um, actually, we'll only be in the Netherlands on this go around for another three weeks, and then I'll be going to uh, Liverpool. So it'll change. But like, subscribe, give me some love, and see you soon.